Before Arizona Senator Martha McSally ran for Congress, she served for the United States military for 26 years. She became America's first female combat jet pilot and continued breaking through barriers throughout her time in the service. Now, as she faces a fight for re-election, the senator's new book, Dare to Fly, shares how her insights from her legislative and military careers shape her decisions today. Senator Martha McSally joins us now via Skype. Thank you so much for being with us, Senator. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. So tell us why you wanted to, to write this and what you want people to take from it. Well, I've had some unique experiences in my life. I'm really blessed. Uh, I went from being a shy, pudgy, motion sick kid uh, to being the first woman to fly in combat in our history and command a fighter squadron. You have climbed Mount Kilimanjaro and other mountains. I took on the Pentagon when they made our service women wear burqas in Saudi Arabia in an eight year battle and won. And in the course of that journey, even though those are unique experiences, I feel like I've had common experiences, really anybody who's viewing this, it's overcoming fear. How do you find your courage? How do you deal with adversity and loss and grief? How do you persevere past obstacles, things that are out of your control or mistakes you made? So I want to be the wingman to the reader. We, when we go into combat, we never fly solo. We always have somebody on our wing to provide mutual support. And my hope is that through my experiences, people can find their own courage, break through their own barriers, and soar above the clouds in their own lives. Mm. We could so use that more than ever right now with this pandemic. Indeed. Right. I, Senator, just if you could relay, I mean, I know you've had many experiences, especially in the combat realm, you know, and as, your, as a woman um, in that, how did that, how did that inform your experience whenever it came to becoming a United States Senator? Well, I share some of my stories of uh, as, as, as a woman in the military breaking through some barriers and there was sometimes hostility, you know, some people denigrating you here and there and it was uh, challenging and isolating at times. Um, I think that helped prepare me for, you know, campaigning when people are uh, denigrating you and you see these lying attack ads. I had to learn as a woman in the military how to have thick skin. Uh, how to not take things so personally, but not lose your humanity. And I think those skills really helped. Uh, look, uh, part of a lesson in the book Dare to Fly is don't walk by a problem. Uh, that's why I ran for office in the first place. I found myself yelling at the television and it's part of our culture in the military. If you're complaining about something, what are you going to do about it? And so I'm stepping up to serve in this new combat zone in D.C. And I think the core values of my service, integrity, service, excellence, bringing those to this new deployment in D.C. are sorely needed. You know, people who mm. care more about what's best for the country instead of what's best for you and all the other things that uh, veterans carry with them. Hmm. Yeah. And you do, of course, have a tough reelect on your hands this year. What do you think are the major issues that this election is going to turn on? Well, uh, let me just say it's an honor to serve Arizona. Uh, it's a, a frustrating place in D.C., but being representing Arizona right now during this crisis, I look at things like, you know, I lost my dad when I was 12. This could be the last year of my life. What am I going to do to make a difference for others? And it's an honor to be here right now. I think going forward, this is a very consequential election. It's going to decide the direction of the country. Who do you trust to get the economy going again? Those of us who already showed that our policies were working to have this really strong economy. And also, who do you trust to take on China? I've never trusted a communist in my life and never will. Uh, my opponent, on the other hand, is invested in them and he, mm. they are invested in him. And who do, who do you want to stand up to communist China to hold them accountable for this coronavirus and their other activities? I've got them threatening right now, mean right now, the Communist Party threatening me, all while my opponent is actually invested in them and they're invested in him. So this is, I think, going to be consequential uh, for everyone in Arizona uh, as they make their choice in the fall. You know, Senator, we've, we've tracked, of course, this, uh, Communist China and many of their missteps early on in this campaign. However, we've noticed the polling, not necessarily just in your race, but across the board for Republicans, mm -hmm. seems to be lagging. Why is, do you think that is? Um, I mean, does, do you think that it owes to the fiscal response here? And uh, as you and your colleagues, you know, we're going to come back to Washington and consider another round of fiscal response. Tell us what you're going to deliver for the American people who clearly mm -hmm. are wanting something more. Well, again, the only poll that matters is on Election Day. And right now I'm focused on serving Arizonans. When this pandemic hit, 
this unprecedented challenge like we haven't seen this century. We had a strong economy and now this virus comes from China and with their cover up, it's caused such calamity in lives and livelihood. So we already sprung into action. I was very focused on getting immediate cash to families and workers, supporting small businesses to stay afloat, investing in our healthcare heroes, cures and treatments and vaccines. Moving forward, if more needs to be done, and we'll be looking at it, it needs to very much focus on getting Americans back to work, allowing them to provide for their families, safely working, helping these small businesses while we continue to invest in defeating this virus, which we will. Yeah. And look, there's no doubt that people should take a look at the, you know, the role in what China did and all of this. I think American people agree yes. with you on all of that. But we're also facing, you know, 100,000 dead Americans here. We've had one of the yes. worst outbreaks in the world. We've suffered much worse unemployment than most other countries out of this because of that failed financial response. I mean, where does the failure lie within our own government here? Um, well, I disagree with the premise of your question. Uh, China kicked out journalists. They silenced doctors. They destroyed samples. We still don't know who patient zero is. And a study in the UK showed if they had just acted three weeks earlier, it could have stopped 95 percent of the cases. They blame the U.S. Army and they're still in a cover up campaign. This is their Chernobyl -like sure, Senator, situation. but those are factors that impact everyone yeah. in the world, not just the so United States part, of America, where we've had 100,000 Americans yes. die, where we have mass unemployment that, again, other nations aren't experiencing. Isn't there some level of accountability to somebody here in this country? Well, we're all in this together, and we've been doing everything we can at the federal level, at the state level, across the faith community and nonprofits. On our part, we put $3 trillion to try and get cash directly to families, workers, and support small businesses to keep the economy afloat, while we also are protecting our frontline healthcare workers, ensuring we have our healthcare yeah. capacity. So this is time for us to be united as a country, uh, working together, all of society, to defeat this virus and to protect the vulnerable. I know there's a lot of fear and uncertainty. I talk about that in my book. We all can face fear and we all need to push through this fear and look out for how we can be a wingman to others to get through this very difficult time. I'm doing my part as a senator, but also as a person. I donated my paycheck in April to help others. Uh, I'm doing shifts at the food bank. I'm doing everything I can. And that's how we're gonna get through this with the American spirit will be stronger. Certainly commendable. Senator, last question here for you, which is Senator yeah. Cory Gardner in Colorado has co-signed onto a plan pushed by Senator Josh Hawley to cover Americans' payroll. Is that something that you would support? And is that the level of fiscal response that you think that we should be looking at right now? Well, I'm happy to take a look at that legislation and other initiatives. Again, at going forward, it's really important that we support those who were working and they were asked to stay home in order to save other people's lives. This is a very unprecedented challenge. So what can we do to propel them back to work safely and also protect these small businesses so the jobs are there as we're allowed to uh, have the economy opening back up again? Mm. Let's work together on this. It's a time to be united. It's a time for us to dig in again to the American spirit. We're doing everything we can in Washington, D.C. Uh, we're working to do more if we need to. Uh, let's use this as a time of uni unity, not divisiveness. Certainly. Senator, thank you so much for your time today. And thank you, of course, for your service as well. Congrats Absolutely. on the book, man. And people can go to daretofly.us. And I want to hear your inspiring stories as well. I'm going to bring you into the cockpit of the A-10 Warthog, into the canyons in Afghanistan, and my first takeoff solo. And I hope you'll be encouraged to overcome your own fears mm. and to meet your full potential. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you, Senator. One of the coolest planes Thanks ever made. So thank you. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. We'll have more Rising for you right after this.